Today's lesson is all about factoring polynomials, so let's get started. We're going to talk about the four techniques, the first of which is uh, the greatest common factor. So you can see i got three terms in this polynomial. The integers, the coefficients, they all have a common factor of 12. And then what the variables have in common is an x to the first and a y to the first. Factor that out, you're left with 5x minus 4y plus 6 x squared. And you'll always know if you factored correctly because you can multiply your result and see if you end up uh, what you started with. This one looks a little funky, but it's actually just a binomial. Two terms. One term there, one term there. And what they have in common is a 3, an x squared, and a 3x plus 4. So what's left in the first term is a 3x plus 4. And what's left in the second term is a 2 and an x. So this is 3x squared times 3x plus 4 times 5x plus 4. Okay, so that takes care of GCFs. Now let's talk about special products. Uh, they're called special products because these things are the results of multiplying certain things together. So uh, a squared plus b squared, it's called the sum of squares. It is always prime. So here's an example of the sum of squares. So it is prime. Like, guys, we have the difference of squares, but this one is factorable. So it's a plus b, a minus b. Again, foil that out, and you'll get a squared minus b squared. So over here, difference of squares. Let's go positive first. Let's stay positive. m to the fifth minus n to the fifth. Perfect square trinomials, they are called so because they are the result of squaring a binomial and it results in a trinomial. So the binomial that was squared to get this trinomial was a plus b squared. So see if you can figure out how to identify a perfect square trinomial. This one right here is a perfect square trinomial. It turns out that it's 5x plus 3 squared. You could also have the middle term be negative and still have a perfect square trinomial. This one would be a minus b squared. And technically we should be saying the quantity of a minus b squared. Um, over here, another perfect square trinomial. It just looks a little funky, but it is x plus y minus 2 squared. And we can get rid of those parentheses and just write it like that. Okay, sum of cubes. So when you have two cubes being added together, that will factor into a binomial times a trinomial. And so that's the first one squared. This middle term are the, uh, the two terms in the binomial multiplied together, and then the last term is always the square of the second term of your binomial. And then the signs, um, if I get rid of that highlighting, so basically, let me trim it down a little bit. So this sign here always matches the original, this one is always opposite, and this one is always a plus. Okay, so some of you may be familiar with mop or some of you may be familiar for matching opposite plus, some of you may be familiar with soap, same, opposite, always positive. So here's an example of the sum of cubes, so we know it's a binomial times this trinomial. And then there's the difference of cubes. 
Same thing applies. It's still a binomial times a trinomial. And the signs still are matching opposite plus. So with this one, the binomial is y plus 2 minus 2. And the trinomial is y plus 2 squared plus 2 times y plus 2 plus 4. So this turns out to just be y. So we got y squared plus 4y plus 4 plus 2y plus 4 plus 4, which comes out to be y squared plus 6y. Plus 12. Okay, so that takes care of the special um, products. Now we're going to talk about factor by grouping, often used when there are four terms in the polynomial. We look at them two terms at a time. So if I look at the first two terms, they have an x in common. Factor the x out of those two, and you get 5 plus y. Look at the next two. Notice that if you factor out a negative 1, you end up with 5 plus y. So now my four-term polynomial has become a binomial. Two terms. One term, two terms. And those two terms have a 5 plus y in common, so we factor that out. And then we're left with x minus 1. Sometimes you have to rearrange the terms in order to, to group them. So I'll put the 3x squared and the 3x together like so, and then the 4xy and the 4y together. So I factor out a 3x, I have x plus 1. Factor out a 4y, x plus 1. So now there's an x plus 1 in common, and you get 3x plus 4y. And then unfoiling, or reverse foiling. There's a couple different names for it. But these are done with trinomials, and we know that we want to factor it into two binomials. I know I need an x and an x here because that's how I get x squared. I know I need factors of 6, so my choices are 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. And we can see that the 1 and 6 is going to get me my middle term, my 7. So there you have it. Similarly here, I know I need m and m. I need factors of 14, so 1 and 14 are my choices, or maybe 2 and 7. I can see that 2 and 7 are going to get me the negative 9m that I need in the middle. So those are the ones I use. Notice here the leading coefficient is not a 1, but that's okay. So that just means instead of having a and a, I need a 2a and an a. I'm still looking for factors of 6, understanding that one of them is going to be multiplied by this 2 here. Um, so if I use... 3 and 2, I want to make sure that the 2 is multiplied by that 2 and that the 3 goes here. And now I want to make sure that I get the right sign in the middle. So if we can test this, um, we know we're going to get 2a squared and we know we're going to get negative 6. It's the positive a in the middle that we're concerned about. So multiplying those two, I get a negative 3a. And multiplying these two, I get a positive 4a. And adding those together, I get the positive A that I need. So this is the solution. And here we have more choices, right? So we could go 8K and K. We could go 4K and 2K. Um, I'm going to show you a little trick that we can actually use factor by grouping. If we take the 8 and the negative 3 and we multiply those together, we get negative 24. So now I'd like you to think about factors of negative 24 that add up to 10 and those would be negative 12 and positive 2. So we can split that negative 10k up into negative 12k and positive 2k. So 8k squared minus 12k plus 2k minus 3. Now we have four terms and we can factor by grouping. So if I take a 4k out of here, I'm left with 2k minus 3 and then 2k minus 3. So the 2k minus 3 is in common, 4k plus 1. And there you have it. So those are the four techniques, 
and in many times you will have to combine those techniques in order to factor a polynomial expression. See you later.